Hi, TCG fam. Chart gal Lori here covering Futures 101. I've received a lot of questions about the basics of trading futures. Uh, this will just go over the month, the contract, the year, uh, just general formatting and tick and tick value and margins. Trading futures. Trading futures involves a futures exchange or a market which is identified as a central financial exchange. We primarily use the CBOE and CME, where people can trade standardized futures contracts, that is a contract to buy a specific quantity of a commodity or financial instrument at a specified price, with delivery set at a spe spe specific or specified time in the future. And also I'd like to point out that our commodities trading floor uh, is in Chicago, so most of the times listed, if you go look up uh, some of these future contracts, the majority, well, all of them are at on central standard time. Commodities futures. Commodities futures are agreements to buy or sell a raw material at a specific date in the future at a particular price. The contract is for a set amount. The three main areas of commodities are food, energy, and metals. The most popular food energy Futures are meat, wheat, and sugar. Items such as lean hog, soybean, corn, that's what we're used to uh, in the food segment. Most energy futures involve oil and gasoline. Uh, we trade a lot of nat gas and oil in our room. And metals using futures including gold, silver, copper, palladium, and platinum, uranium, just to name a few. Commodities contract dates. Commodities contract dates are out in the future are monthly versus the sector contract dates, which are quarterly. So just a special note for commodities, we have a futures contract that is expires the third week of every month. There are specific, uh, it varies the date every month. It's this certain business day of the third week of the month. And then if it that day falls on a weekend, then you move it to the third business day before. So just check your commodities contract dates. It's not a specified date on every month because we have our weekends. Uh, so brokers typically default to the next contract out front. If trading commodities in June, for example, the contract default date would typically be July. So the current contract for oil is CL. N19 R CL in 2019. CL is for indicates oil. Uh, the month N is the month of July and 2019 as the year. So Trading View uses CL in 2019, for example, and TD Ameritrade uses CL in 19. Let me show you what this looks like in Trading View. So here we have CL, we have CLN. So we go up to Trading View. We just type in CL and click here, and then you can see all the monthly contracts: CLN 2019, CLQ 2019. Then the U is for September. Why are we trading the forward contract month? Well, let's just jump to a year from now. You see, we have a liquidity issue. So I'm, there's obviously a obviously a specific reason that traders trade that far out but we have a definite liquidity issue. So if we stick with our forward month, which at this time is CLN 2019, you can see that liquidity is a lot better. Uh, so typically that's what you will find the traders, at least in our room, that are trading uh, the forward month contract. We, of course, we want to close this out before the expiration uh, oil, for example, we are agreeing to buy a thousand barrels of oil on or before the contract expiry in July, around the third week of July. Well, none of us want a tanker showing up at our house with a thousand barrels of oil. That is not our intention when trading these. So we want to be sure that we are out in time before the contract expiration. And then we would roll to the next month if we were in a swing. So we would want to roll to the August contract. So with our brokers, typically they will, as you get closer, they will warn you, hey, hey, it's about to expire. We're going to force liquidate, force close, because they don't, they know they don't want to deal with barrels of oil, so they will force close you. Uh, and this is, uh, holds true for most sectors and most brokers. But again, check your broker and specifically, would they let you hold something into expiration? So just be careful. 
Sector contract dates. Sector contract dates are quarterly, March, June, September, December. Brokers typically default to the next contract out front, i.e. if trading sectors in May, the contract default date would be June. As you near the expiration date of the contract, which for us is June 21st of this year, 2019, your broker may roll that date to the next expiration date, which is September 20th. We're constantly checking liquidity and volume to see which is best for technical analysis. The higher the liquidity, the better, the higher the volume, the better, because we get better liquidity. So for example, uh, most of us in the room are trading ESM19 or ESM2019. EAS stands for SPY Futures. M stands for the month of June. September will change to a U. Then it would be ESU19. 2019 obviously is the year. Some brokers abbreviate this to ESM19. And not to complicate matters, even though it may sound like we're complicating it, uh, micro futures have been an awesome addition to the CME, and that started around May 6th, I believe. Uh, and they started with a boom, great liquidity. So micro futures are 10% of a standard futures contract. So for ES, uh, futures, it's one-tenth that of margin, one-tenth that of, of uh, profit or loss. So if for a regular contract, ESM19, let's just do U so I don't, um, ESU2019, we're doing the September contract. If we wanted to see the micro, it would be the same letters. We just add an M in front of it. This does not hold true for our RTY. RTY is M. Two. Let me just. If you don't remember it here, RTYM 2019 is our current contract, and for the micros on the Russell, it is M2K. Why do I want to say 2YK? M2K. So it's the Russell 2000. So uh, it is unlike Nasdaq and ES and YM the Dow. You can't just simply put an M in front of it. Of it. it has different letters. All right. So we got that straight. On commodities, we're monthlies. On sectors, we're quarterlies. Now tick. I don't know why, but this is probably the hardest thing for me to understand. I thought that tick was so foreign and I uh, made it vague on purpose because I thought it was harder to, um, to understand or comprehend than what it really is. A tick is a measurement of the minimum upward or downward movement and the price of a security. A tick can also refer to the change in the price of a security from trade to trade. A tick is defined by instrument. Each type of futures contract has a very tick measurement. For example, ES. So this is the main ES project, not the, uh, contract instrument, not the micro. Tick size is 25 cents. Tick value is $12.50. So for a quarter up, you get $12.50. For a quarter down, it's subtracted $12.50 loss. Margin required for intraday trading is $7,700. Just a note on margin, margin varies by broker and margin varies by broker for intraday versus outside of regular stock market trading hours. So regular trading hours of 6.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., Regular trading stock hours they have a different uh, margin requirement than you do outside of trading hours. Please check with your broker to verify margin and contract costs. What's your commissions? Some people pay $2.20 each way. Uh, some people pay less than that and some people pay more than that. It's typically a little bit cheaper than just buying stocks. But just like with stocks, you're paying each way. You're paying to get in and you're paying to get out. Here's a trade example. If I want to buy ES long, I, let's say I want to buy the current contract. I would buy ESM19 to buy it long to open one contract at $2,800. And then to sell it, let's say it goes up $10. Then I would sell long, sell to close ESM19 at $2,810. That's a $10 move that equals 40 ticks. How did we get that? A tick, a tick measurement in ES is 25 cents. So that's here, tick size. Tick size is 25 cents. 40 ticks times $12.50, $12.50 is our tick value. 
So 40 ticks times $12.50, our tick value gives us $500 profit on one contract. And just note, one contract would utilize approximately $7,700 of margin. And I have a bunch of asterisks by that. Please check with your broker for the exact amount that would use. So just to give you an idea of tick size and tick value, as you can see, ES a quarter is a large tick value. But again, it doesn't move as fast as an instrument like NASDAQ. So NASDAQ has less value but moves faster. It's a larger, it's a larger value. It's 7,000, 8,000. So it's, it's bigger than ES. So when it moves, it's worth a little bit less. Nat gas, for example, 0.001 tick yields you $10. And the margin for TD Ameritrade, as an example, is $2,100. So this you need to verify on your own. But this part, tick size and tick value, stays the same regardless of broker. So as you can see, Nat gas is quite powerful. So a dollar move on that gas, which would be a large massive move, would be $10,000. All right, what are the advantages of futures? Why are you even watching this video? Why would you want to get involved in futures? More control after market hours. The tax implications are more favorable. It's a blended rate of long-term and short-term capital gains. Please check with your CPA or tax advisor to see what your tax rate would be in my, the standard case. It's approximately 23% for U.S. mainland citizens for that blended rate. And it's extremely, it's 100% more favorable than trading options or stocks uh, on the, for short-term gains. There is no decay. Scalability, especially with the addition of the micro futures, minimizes headline risk. Uh, if you tr were trading Apple as of late, uh, if you were trading Apple straight up, you ha would have had headline risk with possible DOJ uh, threat to investigate a possible monopoly, even though they were just given jurisdiction and they're not actually investigating it. However, if you're trading Apple options and you're in calls, it's going to hit you. It's going to hit you hard. If you're trading NASDAQ, of course, Apple's going to wait, get, bring a weight to that. But you can just have your stop loss set right there and you're out with options. It's hard to estimate unless you have your Greek calculator out. If it drops by $2, what's that impact to that underlying so you can set it to whatever the exact stop loss is that you want to that higher low, for example, if you're in Apple Long. Well, with futures, it's a known risk reward. You put your stop loss there and you know what your maximum loss will be. It leverages capital, not just small capital, large capital. I mean, we have some traders in the room that trade, trade 20 contracts at a time. That won't be everyone. You need to uh, scale your risk according to your account. Uh, so you can leverage large capital as well as small capital. And then finally, lower commission in most cases relative to other types of trades. What are the future's disadvantages? After hours trading is kind of like crypto. Could impact personal life without proper self-control. Uh, risk is extremely high without proper stops uh, and additional costs with trading view for live data and are your broker. I know with interactive brokers, they have additional charges for futures and uh, the live data feed, which I think is imperative to have uh, live data on whatever trading uh, platform you use. You really need the live data so you don't have that 15 minute delay. So uh, I will end it here. If you have any questions, I will be in the room and I look forward to helping you on your journey with futures and we can uh, navigate this together.